so this time we're in Yanpyeong and uh, we're having traditional Korean food with a twist so this is Hanjongsik uh, it's basically like course meals we're gonna have about what, 7 to 10 courses right? Yeah. so we're way out there this is not in Seoul and uh, it's actually been said that uh, you can like if you want good food you have to go out of Seoul and uh, so we're at this restaurant called uh, Sandang so this chef gets all his things, like all his ingredients from the mountain, basically. And uh, it's supposed to be really, really fresh. And just coming in here, we could smell it smells amazing. So I hope we have a really good meal and I hope to introduce you guys to this very fine cuisine. Okay, this is a porridge or juk made out of hyunmi, which is called brown rice. Um, as you can see, you've got some pine nuts here and then a slice of jujube, which is um, it's a fruit that you see often in a Korean medicinal practice and it's quite sweet and you can make a tea out of it. It's called techu in Korean, but jujube in English and it's quite delicious and salty. So this is our second course and it's like a little make your own pancake and there are nine ingredients. So you just get a little bit of each ingredient and then you're going to wrap it up like a little taco, like Hannah just said. <laughs> These little black specks are called sogi bosot and it's chopped up pieces of mushroom that grows on rock. We're here eating our traditional food and uh, so far it's really delicious, really amazing. Especially this tea, I don't know what kind of tea this is, but everything tastes so... Okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna go all hipster on you guys, but this is really fresh stuff. I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Yes. I just can't even describe it. It's just so natural. Something I found out just recently was the story behind why Koreans use metal chopsticks. And it's actually kind of like a status thing to say that we are more... Um, our dexterity is much better because we can use the metal chopsticks as they're quite slippery. So then I, we just got the salad on the table and it came with these really cool big wooden chopsticks. And I found them just fascinating how different they were to the metal ones. Uh, one of the Olympic archers, like uh, well, I think she got like first place and Koreans were boasting that it was, her success was attributed to the use of metal chopsticks. So. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, years of preparation and practice. It's the metal chopsticks. What the restaurant has served us is this salad and they've advised us to put on a piece of pork and, um, and then top it with some of the onions that come on top. And what's really special about this pork is the flavor. As Sammy said, it tastes very clean. Noe thinks that it tastes like nothing he's ever tried before and I definitely feel like it's kind of smoky and herby. It's really quite delicious and the texture is awesome as well. Alright, so this is Noktuchan. And uh, it's kind of like Bindetok, but uh, it uses a different kind of mung bean. And it's actually really crispy and really well cooked. It kind of reminds me of the hash browns from back home. That homemade hash brown taste, but with a twist of Korea to it. Mm. I don't know how I can call myself like a food blogger if I can't even describe most of the food that I'm eating. It's really amazing. So these are our little balls and this one is actually made out of potato. So it's almost like um, mashed potatoes but not quite so soft. And inside there are all these medicinal herbs and a slightly sweet glaze on the top. And we have another one that's brown that's made out of mushroom. Alright, so in the inside we have tan hobak, which is basically sweet squash. We have some pumpkin seeds on the outside and we have a little chili paste on the outside. So our next dish here is an octopus ball, quite similar to the famous Japanese uh, dish. We have the octopus on the bottom and on top is a crisped ginger with a green tea sauce. And the idea is that you squish it all together and eat that. And then there's a pomegranate seed that you pop into your mouth after and the flavor just kind of explodes. We have a beautiful dish, it's just presented so nicely. Um, here we have the lotus root 
and it has it's been lightly fried so it's really crisp um, and topped with a red wine sauce which is very sweet and complements the crispy flavor and wow I'm just amazed how they've done this with potato so it's thinly shredded potato um, fried and then somehow made into this amazing tower so what this is actually called is a Korean um, green called nangi, and in English it's called shepherd's purse. So it's very delicately fried here. Alright, so this time we have anchang sal. Uh, it's basically beef. I'm not sure which part of the cow, but the main attraction to me at least is the cilantro. Now most people would think Koreans don't like cilantro, and uh, everyone I met treats it like kryptonite. But traditionally, cilantro was in like many Korean dishes. It's just not so, not so prevalent anymore. And I really wanted to point that out. And, uh, there's actually a good video by someone that I know that talks about cilantro in food. So I'll put the link for you guys to see it. This is a little tiny fried crab. And if you see compared to my finger how small it is. And we're gonna dip it in this yuja sauce, which is a citron sauce and then you just eat it in one bite like it's popcorn. Very crispy. <laughs> so here we have uh, four chestnuts. And it seems to be in like a little sauce. It's a jam. A, a jam of some sort. In Korea, um, they use an ondo system where the floor is heated. It's like water in the pipes and it heats up. Um, so right now I just feel like I'm sitting on a nice fluffy hot water bottle <laughs> actually and we're quite lucky to have ondol in our apartments and I'm actually really naughty I leave mine on during the day when I'm not at home so that when I walk in that door I can just defreeze myself and just kind of take all my jacket off my scarf off and then I sometimes just go and sit on the floor <laughs> to warm my bones up and yeah, a lot of people don't leave it on during the day because of the cost, but my bills are so minimal anyway that I really, I'd rather be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we have our rice here. Uh, it's got some awesome pine nuts and chestnuts too. So it's gonna be really delicious. We got here a ton of dishes that we're gonna talk about. So we'll do our best to talk about them. Okay, so kimchi comes in many different forms and two are right here. We have white kimchi and red kimchi. And this red kimchi is really quite special because it's got some apple in it as well. So it's adding some sweetness. And um, this kimchi actually comes from the pots that are stored right outside our window. And, um, and it's really quite special. Kimchi has a lot of different components. A lot of people think it's vegetarian, but it's mostly not. You can make vegetarian kimchi, but most of it definitely has some fish ingredients. So there's a salt water, cabbage, chili paste, and pepper, and um, fish sauce. So that's how you get that really awesome mix of flavors. So amongst this huge selection of kimchis here, we have the bek kimchi, which is just the white um, cabbage. It doesn't have the the chili paste in it, so it's a you know it's a less spicy or not spicy alternative to kimchi. Um, the reason I really like this is the yellow. It's actually pineapple, so it's white kimchi with I guess a pineapple juice or extract or something like that. So I'm really excited to try this one. It's something very different and new. All right, so in the middle of the table, we have a uh, doenjang chige. It's basically like soybeans that have been fermented and then you kind of make a stew around it. It's really, really damn good. Now about this place, uh, I already mentioned before, for outside we have these huge pots where they have the doenjang and the kimchi and like all the chili paste. So this stuff's been fermented for like at least a year and it's really amazing. Shells, so you eat all of it or you um, take the meat out? I think out. you have to kind of suck the meat out. Okay. Mm. So that goes Here you put a little bit of rice into the crab head 
you keep flipping it over and kind of mix it all in so that you can get all that delicious crab brain juice goodness. And then you're gonna take a big bite at the end. It's really good. Oh, it's really good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have our nirungji. Uh, I mentioned earlier, it's like the burnt rice at the bottom of the pot. And here we made like a little stew, you add the hot water to it, let it sit, and then we have it in our little bowl. So, uh, Hannah was mentioning it's kind of like a relic of Korea's past, because back then you know, Korea was kind of poor and people wanted to get all the food possible, like they wanted to eat everything. And it's also kind of meant to clean, clean your palate after you eat, so it's eaten at the end of the meal. But it's actually delicious. And if you ever get a chance to try Nurungji Tang, that's good. There's like chefs who they really want everyone to be able to eat this food because it's so delicious. So what they do is they lower the price. The quality stays the same, the price goes down, but people actually stop coming because they believe that the price goes with like the quality. So.